what we do this time of year is the pruning, which starts the, before we have bud break in uh, spring, you gotta prune. What we do now sets the stage for what kind of fruit we're gonna get, uh, fruit set, uh, the quantity and quality. So I'd like to show you how, how it's That's done. That's great, that's exciting. I've never done this before. In the dormancy, everything, all the leaves are gone. The, the canes, these are canes. These are the buds that will produce. This is a cordon and this is a spur. This is a spur. Off of the spur becomes uh, the shoots here. So what I'm trying to do is get down to two buds. I don't, there's a bud down here. I don't count that, it's a basil bud, but this bud and this bud on the other side are my two buds. This is the last one. I'm actually gonna leave three down here. And this is the dead wood. We pull the dead wood, you can burn it, you can mulch it. I've left a, a one extra one here. In the spring, let's say late March, early April, when we start warming up and things are pushing, the very first one that's gonna break bud is usually the one at the very end. If we have a frost there right after that, I've left myself one extra bud. So let's say this, this were to uh, push on like April 5th and somewhere around April 15th, it's setting up here and I get a frost. I've got a couple other ones here to push as well. So I have a little bit of frost protection. And you wanna cut a little bit of an angle. Make sure we don't have water setting on the, the cut or the open wound. So these two little buds that I left here will push two shoots. They grow rapidly through the month of May. The fruit hangs in here. This is called a fruiting wire. So your fruit zone's in here and it makes it very uniform. What you're looking for in wine is uniformity. Uh, with all your grapes ripening at the same time, having the same uh, sugar content, pH content, acid, and that makes the best wine. That old saying, it starts here in the vineyard. It starts in January, February, maybe early March before we get, uh, before the vines wake up. Okay, you said if I cut one of these that maybe I'll, all right. I'll be in one of your right. award-winning wines. Yes, so here, it, put it in there and take the top one off, leaving the lower okay. one, and then we'll leave these two buds here. Uh-huh, crunch. Oh, there nice, you go. Nice tool. Okay, and now <laughs> go ahead and, and cut it at a diagonal at about, yeah, halfway between that one and the other one there. This is my wine. Yeah. Want my name so on see, the you are you are making Tempranillo <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> which is a is a wonderful Spanish grape and does extremely well here in Southern Oregon. Maybe I'll come back and make you pick or something. <laughs> Each vine is touched about 15 times by hand, and I'm a very small vineyard with only 5,000 plants roughly, so you can tell 15 times five. There's a lot of touches in it that goes into a, a growing season. Great. Uh, so that just gives you an idea. Uh, how much labor is involved, but you know, it's a labor of love. Yeah, so. you have to love it. And I can't wait to try some of your wine. All right. What I'd like to pour for you first is Grenache. Grenache is the lightest uh, of our uh, red wines. Uh, Grenache tends to drink similar characteristics to a Pinot Noir. So, uh, yeah, but it's not as big and bold as let's say some of, uh, some of the bigger reds that you'll see. Yeah, it's light. Lighter color. It's beautiful uh -huh. color. This is, color. yeah. Uh, but Grenache has some really neat characteristics. A lot, a lot of times it'll have some cinnamon notes and uh, uh, cranberry and, oh, mm. and cherry. Rhone varietals do extremely well in Southern Oregon. Uh, Grenache has proven to do very well. Um, so where, where, when you're opening a winery, where do you buy vines? I mean, There's nurseries, uh, nurseries throughout the West Coast. You know, uh, Oregon, Washington, California are definitely the wine producers of the of the United States. Uh, our dry our dry summers uh, really lend itself to all the old world vines. And it's funny that you would ask, and I would tell you that we are planting Merlot, Cab Franc, Malbec. Chardonnay and some additional Grenache, which are we are having as well. By the way, I love your tasting room. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about when people can come and see you. Well, uh, this year, you know, last year it was every Saturday, and um, when we condense uh, a week's worth of tasting to a Saturday, it can be a lot of fun. It can be a fun for everybody. They say some of our guests say you guys throw the best parties. It's <laughs> like whoa, 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 we thought we were just throwing a tasting. You know, this is our farm stand. But uh, this year we're gonna we're gonna consolidate. We're gonna go ahead and do first and third weekends of every month, so May through September, and we want people to come up and enjoy the view. The, the view here is pretty special. We want to share it with our new friends, our wine club members, uh, guests. Uh, a lot of people from out of town or out of the state, and uh, who don't have this type of uh, scenery to look at. So we we feel really blessed to offer that and let them enjoy that and. Uh, yeah. Oftentimes, um, when we can, we have some amazing food trucks. We had a wood-fired pizza truck oh, and that's some good. very nice, high-quality, high-end food that would come down here. And that was popular, as well as we always offer some light food menu. 
but we'll throw some games out there. We always have games for the kids. They have a little playground over there. If adults feel uh, competitive and they want to get their hand at bocce, we allow them to go to the bocce, the gazebos, and of course the gardens look beautiful in the spring, right. summer, and fall. Children will pick the strawberries. And that was excellent, by the way. So the next wine we want to pour is uh, Tempranillo. This is the uh, 2013 Tempranillo. A Tempranillo, like we say, is a Spanish varietal. It's the third most planted grape in all the world. And uh, this is the vine I just cut. Yeah, and this is, yes, I'm, yeah. I'm part of your yeah. Uh -huh. I love our Tempranillo. <laughs> And we, uh, our harvest looks like this. We usually have our help with harvest since we're small. Winemaker, he is, his production facility is located about 20 miles away. So we literally pick the grapes as early as we can in the morning, put them on the truck and trailer, and run to Rob's, and we process immediately wow. for and. Uh, and we hand sort everything. But the great thing about having friends, family, and wine club members is they're coming for food and wine, so there's no rush, and we very meticulously sort in the field. And so what does it mean? Available to the general public. Uh, usually a discount that it would extend beyond what it would be offered to the general public. Uh, we have special release wines we make only for the wine club. And then they get to come to the parties that we have on a release party. I told Catherine, you know, when we have such small planting, but I wanted some Bordeaux grapes because I love Bordeaux wines. And we just didn't have the room for it at the time uh, until we acquired this other piece of property. So much complexity yeah. in the blends, and it's, it's it's like painting with more than one color, as you know. Yeah. So with this, in, ca in this case, we painted mm -hmm. with four colors. Just complexity. More complex. I complexity. And yeah. Layering. I think that's the beauty. Layering. It's more artistry. It's nice. I love Very a single nice. varietal, for instance, our Tiffany Ramage, because they are fully expressive of that grape. Uh huh. But these are fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they pair very well with so many things. Cheers. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs>